guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm coming at you with a combination foundation slash powder review. Before I get into anything, I want to address what has obviously become the big elephant in the room, which is my audio. I've gotten a lot of comments about it lately. Some have been neutral, some have been not so nice. I'm gonna let you know. My old house had carpet in it, and I know I've said this before, I'm going to make it quick because so many of y'all don't care and are so sweet about it, but I have to do this disclaimer. This does not have carpet. My entire head, there's not a stitch of my house now that has carpet in it. I moved in not even a month ago, so I don't have much on the wall in this room yet. Chad is building me soft boxes, or sound boxes, not soft boxes. He is currently halfway through with building me sound boxes, and two of them are kind of leaned up against my couch over here. I have ordered a rug for this room to help. It's, it's baby steps. So I just want everybody to understand that like, I don't eat, sleep, and breathe YouTube. I love YouTube or I wouldn't do it, but I have so much else going on in my life as we all do, and I'm doing the best I can. So just let you know, this is gonna have a little bit of an echo. Sound quality may not be the best. I actually ordered a different microphone. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's just everything hasn't come yet. So let's go ahead and get into the actual video. I'm going to be talking about not only foundation, but also powder and they go together. This is the number seven lift and luminate triple action serum foundation and number seven lift and luminate triple action finishing powder. So I bought both of these on a whim as I was in target one day. I don't typically go to the drugstore section much because usually when I go to the drugstore of any type, whether it be the grocery store or Target, I have my kids with me. Um, I am like, I have a goal in mind. I have a couple things I need. I want to get in and get out because it's rare again that I don't have my kids with me and I can actually <laughs> spend time looking. But I did come past this because Cortland always wants to go to the makeup section now and I picked it up. So. We're going to talk about this. This is not new. It's new to me. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do, I haven't done a foundation review in a while. So let's go ahead and get into it. I've done my brows, primed my eyes, and corrected under my eyes. Otherwise, I have absolutely no makeup on my face. Let's do the foundation first. So this is formulated with the proven anti-aging ingredients from the Number 7 Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Serum. I've never used any of the Number 7 skincare before, so I can't talk to that, but apparently this has the same ingredients for skincare as is in the Lift and Illuminate Serum. The serum foundation instantly reduces the appearance of lines and wrinkles, skin looks firmer, and appears more even. Optical blurring technology, light reflecting particles, broad spectrum SPF 15, which is comprised of both chemical and physical, it is, let me get down to the ingredients, octanoxate 5%, titanium dioxide 1.7%. Flexible formula moves with the skin and all day hydration restores suppleness and plumper looking skin. Now this does not have any added fragrance. It does have a very lengthy ingredient list. It does have parabens, at least one that I see right now, methyl paraben, and it does have denatured alcohol. Both of those products are on the inky list underneath underneath, underneath, phenoxyethanol, which can only be in a product in the U.S. up to 1%. So you know that anything that comes under that is going to be at least under 1%. So it's a small, they're there, but it's a very small percentage of the product. This retails for $15.99 at Target. I could not find it at Ulta. I know they carry number seven, but I feel like they may only carry the skincare. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I could not find it. It's the basic 30 mils, and it comes in what I'm counting 13 shades. The shade range is not good. It is a bunch of light to light mediums, a couple of mediums, and one semi-dark. So if you have dark, dark skin tone, I mean, this is not going to be the foundation for you. I think that shouldn't really be acceptable. So, and what else was I going to say? Oh, it's $15.99. Let's go ahead and get into it. I got it at the drugstore, so I could not, I mean, they don't even have testers out now at Ulta and Sephora, but drugstores rarely ever had testers, at least Target. Sometimes Walgreens has in the past, but Target has not. So I flew by the seat of my pants when I picked this color and it was honey. It does look a lot darker than the skin on my face when I apply it, but I assure you by the time we finish up, it is going to match fine. So, I've tried this as with any other foundation. 
that I review multiple times with multiple primers and multiple powders. Today, I'm going to try it with no primer so you see how it works on the face by itself and with the powder that I'm gonna talk about. I take two pumps, I need to get a brush, back of my hand. So this is it right here, you can see the consistency. It says it's a serum foundation, however, it is not too runny. I mean, it's moving, but when I think of serum foundation, I think of like basically water running down your hand. That's not the case for this at all. And I am gonna use a brush because I prefer a brush. I have tried it with a e-blender or a sponge, and I don't love it. I find that the sponge actually picks up the product too much as I'm laying it down, picks it back up, and I don't get the coverage that I want out of the foundation. So I prefer a brush. I've used two brushes with this, this one and a Sephora brush that is discontinued. This is the It Cosmetics Dual Ended Number 7 brush, and I stipple it in like I do all foundations. So you can see right here. I did not see anything on the information about what coverage that it provides. I'm going to say it provides a medium coverage. This is not full coverage in my book because I can still see some of my spots through it, but I do feel like it's medium because any redness that I had, which is pretty tame today, can y'all believe it? My redness isn't out as much as it normally is. It's not showing through, but like when I used a sponge and I would come up here, especially on my cheek area, it would pull the product away. So this is with no makeup. This is with. So just like any foundation, I mean, it, it covers and evens out and does what I want it to do. So if you can see when you first apply this, like in comparison to my skin tone, it does work when you blend it out. But this has a very almost green undertone. So if you have olive skin and you have trouble finding undertones that work for you, this is going to work because it is a very strong olive undertone. I don't typically have olive undertones, but again, I picked this on a whim and it still works. This kind of consistency, I don't have any dry patches right now. I have gotten to where I use retinol or retin-a every night now. So I feel like my skin is really acclimated and I don't really flake much anymore, but I can see this consistency actually not working that well dry skin if you have flaky skin. It says it is hydrating, but it's got that almost dry down powder texture. I'm trying to think of another um, foundation that I have used in the past that is like this. The YSL All Hours Foundation is like this. I think I have another one in my collection, but I would have to really search. I think y'all know what I'm talking about though. That type of foundation that just dries down. And sometimes when you have foundations like that, it's not the best for flakes because it's not adding any more hydration and there's really not any kind of hydrating factors in this that I can see. I mean there's tocopherol which is vitamin E but it's way down on the list. Oh there's another paraben. It's basically a lot of dimethicone but this is the foundation close up and I feel like it lays on the skin nicely. Doesn't really accentuate pores. There's that. So let me get everything else done up until the powder segment, and then we'll go to that. Okay, so let's talk about this Lift and Lemonade powder. The number one reason that I wanted to try this was because I have heard this compared and contrasted and duped for the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder for a very long time. So this just looks, this just says instantly smoother and more radiant for your best looking skin. Sets makeup while delivering three age-defying results, reducing the appearance of fine lines, evening out skin tone, and visibly smoothing the skin. Skin instantly appears flawless as if airbrushed. To diffuse light, reduces the appearance of pores and fine lines, leaving the skin looking visibly smoother. Paraben in this as well, and it is a talc-based powder. So let's compare real quick to the Charlotte Tilbury. I got the color light medium in this. And then the, I have the color medium in this. This has eight grams, this has 10 grams. This is, I don't even know how much now, expensive. And this is $12.99. The color is vastly different. I feel like this is more pink than the Charlotte Tilbury. Again, this is $12.99. Now when I bought it, I remember there being more than two colors, but on the number seven website and on the Target website, there are only two colors. I am gonna use the exact same brush that I use pretty much every day. This is the BK Beauty 104 brush and I'm going to set my makeup. 
Now, again, I don't think that this foundation needs a ton of setting, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to set it. And I have used this powder with other foundations as well. I should have done a side by side, but y'all saw what it looked like without the powder, and what it looks like with. I do find that it mattifies a little bit, takes down whatever kind of shine that you may have had, takes that down a little bit. And then this is a close up with the powder in the foundation. So I'm gonna finish up my whole routine and then I'm gonna come back and give you my final thoughts on these two products. Okay, we are back. I have completed my entire face. So you can see what it looks like with all the products on top of it. And I will say, I have used cream products on top of this foundation and underneath this powder, and I don't feel like they perform any more poorly than they do, you know, under or over any other foundation or powder. So let's go ahead and get into my final thoughts quickly. I'll tell you other things that I used underneath the foundation. We'll start with that. So the first day I wore it, I wore it with the number seven powder. And then I used my Jane Iredell Duo that I used in my last video where I took the liquid minerals and the face and body uh, golden shimmer lotion. And I mixed those together as my primer. And then the next day I used the Lorac matte primer because I wanted to see how it worked with, you know, both luminous and matte and then the Gucci beauty powder. And then the third day, I use the Osmosis Luminous Treatment Primer and Highlighter as my primer and the Well People Powder. So I'll go ahead and tell you that while I did not see any specific skin types this was best for, I do think I saw like a snapshot of something that's a combination skin on the Target website. I will agree with that. I do find personally that this foundation is going to work best on combination to oily skin types. If you are normal skin it'll work great for you if you are more dry to tight feeling to have flakes you know this might not be the foundation for you now hear me out i have not used this on clients so this is just my personal opinion if you have dry flaky skin please share in the comments below whether or not you can get this foundation to work with you i'm just going by dry down consistency application wear throughout the day. It is not hydrating on me, but it does last really well throughout the day. Both of those things lean more towards combination skin. Now I have good foundations for dry skin that last all throughout the day with me, but when I take the texture and the dry down and the finish, which is more natural satin matte to me than luminous, um, that's my conclusion. I don't dislike this, but I can tell you that it is a foundation that I will only wear in the summer because it does have a very lengthy wear time, but I already know that how my um, skin can feel a little bit tighter in the winter. It's not going to be the most comfortable and I'm going to reach for my more hydrating foundations in that instance. My favorite day wearing this foundation was with the Osmosis Luminous Treatment Primer and the Well People. And I think it's because this lended towards a more luminous finish, which is not the right finish. It's just the one I prefer. Um, if you don't love a luminous finish, then you would like it with the Lorac primer, or even just by itself. When I wore it with the Lorac primer and the Gucci powder, I just kind of felt a little flat throughout the day, but it didn't look bad. So my overall thoughts are that for the foundation or, or those that I just gave you. Um, I like it. It's not something that I'm going to be like, oh my goodness, stop what you're doing and go buy this foundation. But as far as like a drugstore foundation, I do think it is nice. I don't think the ingredients are the best. And I think there's probably some better out there, but some people don't care about ingredients as much as others. So, you know, we're all grown up. Y'all can make your decisions. Now let's talk about the powder. I can see why people would compare this with the Charlotte Tilbury. They are similar, but they are not exact dupes in my opinion. I do like this powder. I think it is smoothing on the skin. I think saying that it's gonna like take your fine lines away is a little misleading. Like I don't, it doesn't do that. 
um, but it is a nice powder. I do like how it sets makeup. I used it with my Sentegrity uh, Impeccable Skin Tint and Moisturizer one day. I used it obviously with this. I used it with my Osmosis Satin Performance Wear Foundation as well as the primer, the Luminous Primer that I just told you. I mixed those two together. It's actually an Instagram video if y'all saw that. Um, and I loved my makeup that day. So the powder did work really well over that, but I'm, I'm almost attributing it to this because I feel like every time I wear this, my makeup just looks really good. So I do like this powder. I think it sets nicely. It doesn't look overly drying. I'm not gonna say it's particularly hydrating, but it's not drying either. And I do think it takes the shine down just a little bit. The differences I find between these two is that I do feel like I can over apply this. This I can apply every single hour of the day and it will never look like I have too much on, ever. So I do find that this, you can go overboard on it. It's gonna take a while and it's gonna take some effort. Don't get me wrong. But I do feel like that's the main difference. And this one just feels like if a powder can feel a little thicker than the Charlotte Tilbury, then this one would feel a little thicker. And I really don't know unless you have felt that yourself, if you're gonna understand at all what that means. It feels a little thicker. But overall, for $12.99, I mean, if you are not in the market or the budget for this, this you will like this. I'm not saying you won't. I do like this. And I will wear this all year round. So out of the two, I think the powder is my most favorite. I don't dislike this. It's just not what I typically go for. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and got some answers. I mean, again, this is not, a, these are not new products, but I just thought I would share them with you anyhow. So thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. I hope you're all staying safe, healthy, and sane, and that you go out and have a very blessed day.